Tonight is August the 31st, 2013. It's uh, 12.30 in the morning, so it's midnight, past midnight. And I had a request uh, just recently from a YouTube viewer that says, why don't I show people my workbench? And I got to thinking, and I said, you know, that's not a bad idea. I would love to see um, detailed stuff that people have in their workbench because I'm sure there's something I will see in other people's stuff that will I will find uh, that I like and I don't know where to start it's just going to be kind of a random thing I keep a lot of parts these are my half and one watt resistors half watt resistors fuses some mica cap small pots these are just more fuse I said car resistors but I mean uh, car fuses or whatever I got lots of you know parts and parts and parts parts running out my ears got some of my equipment up at the top and a, a few odds and end books blah 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 uh, resistors uh, lots of resistors you know, I won't show you every resistor on down to uh, capacitors I keep a pretty full set of the orange drops and what have you uh, I keep a few odds and end tubes here. I'm always needing to throw the XTs and U's. I got everything else up in, in a, you know, spare sockets. And I do this uh, repair as a, as a small hobby business. Just pretty much everything. Lots of pots. Got tons of those things. Most of these are World War II. Actually, I don't think they're World War II. I think they're actually Korean War. I read that uh, not too long ago in, in parts. Lots of tools for micrometers of various nature, SAE metric and test equipment. I keep some, some of my more exotic test equipment up here, some dummy loads and attenuators and a little uh, TDR watt meter. This is a neat little, I think it's one to one gigahertz, uh, one watt output meter that I use for my RF stuff. I don't do many RF videos. Most all my videos are, uh, are on audio. <clears throat> Same thing, they have more capacitors. This is mislabeled. I have a bunch of, uh, I stock various odds and ends stuff for uh, mostly fenders and uh, and Marshall amps. Shrink tubing, tons of that. I have lots of that. Cable ties and and um, rubber feed and the whole bunch, nine yards. Uh, just got lots of stuff whole lifetime of those RF connectors so I hope this is of some value capacitors there's some my electrolytics I think tectronics probes and what have you more probes okay plenty of uh, connectors a Dremel tool gotta have a Dremel tool best tool in the world uh, my homemade uh, bias probe, as if you want to call it. I just upgraded these resistors. These are those Arcol 1% uh, 8 ohm resistors, low inductance. These are 300 waters. I had 200 waters up there, but I've had this thing up to about 350 degrees before when I've been working on uh, big ampegs and things like that. A few tools, signs to keep me alive. This one out here actually is a sign that we uh, had to, we were required to put on top of a big laser printer we had out at White Sands Missile Range that I worked on for years. I guess back in the 80s, maybe the early 90s. I think we got rid of all of it in the late 80s, early 90s. Anyway, that printer was so fast that the operators would have to take the uh, the paper out of the box and put it in there to keep it from tearing. And at the end of the day. They would take all those boxes of paper that they printed and load them all up on a big flat bed truck, cart them out to the desert, and throw them into a diesel powered shredder. Crazy, huh? This thing right here is kind of unique. Uh, it's set for 90 degrees. At 90 degrees, it goes off and starts beeping. If I press this, everything in the room will go off. But at 90 degrees, it'll shut the room off. And the reason I did that, the reason I Put this thing in here it's actually pretty sophisticated inside is because one day my wife came out here and it was hot it was in the summertime and she decided my air conditioner was using too much electricity 
so she turned it off and I had my equipment on I don't have much of it on right now I had a different oscilloscope up here I think it was a 454 really nice little scope and it uh, it killed it so I said well hmm what am I gonna do to keep my wife from burning up my equipment so that's what I did so for the women I guess you maybe you might have to keep your husband from doing it I don't know I, uh, an old analog meter I don't know how anybody gets through the day without one digital meters are great but analog meters uh, will never go out of style this thing right here is a tie box all these things are parallel all these BNC connectors are parallel so that whatever I put in this is a, a source right here this is coming from those from these dummy loads and I can switch channels here left and right channel and then this just hooks into all the equipment so all the equipment is looking at the same thing at the same time and one of the things I found is when I shortened I put the shortest possible connectors here and I also bought high quality ones I bought Pomona ones instead of these these are little cheapy ones that you get for just a couple of bucks a piece and they they work but they don't work as good as these so this connects all of my equipment up as many as I can get to connect up spectrum analyzer gotta have one gotta have a frequency meter one oscilloscope this is a a, a, a frequency meter goes up to one point uh, whatever it is 1.8 1.2 gigahertz I use that for RF this is a beautiful old uh, signal generator very nice love some of the old HP stuff uh, voltmeter that's all I use it for uh, uh, audio analyzer AA501 these are a pair of uh, SG505s, those are the ultra low distortion 8 parts per million um, oscillators. I don't, you, you need two if you're going to do IMD, intermodulation distortion, which I rarely ever do, except to entertain myself. This is a beautiful old instrument. It's got an oscillator output and the input. I won't go over the details of it. Keep a thermometer up there. A couple of decade resistor boxes. This one is uh, real low. This one goes down to fractions of an ohm. This one goes up to, uh, that's a high resistance box. This uh, attenuator is great to plug in. Right now I have it coming out of the output of the HP and uh, make some nice cables up. I found out that it's better to use nice connectors like this rather than what I've done in the past. See, I've got my terminator right here now. Turn some light on here. Got my terminator right here for eight, my 600 ohm terminator. Because when I put this on the other end, I have to use a little cheapy connectors, and they cause you problems. So there you go. Down here, I keep some uh, some real high frequency stuff for RF again, attenuators and what have you. you gotta have, oops, excuse me. Gotta have a, a drawer full of all of this kind of these kind of goodies, uh, connectors of every imaginable shape and size from BNC, mostly BNC, lots of BNC, lots of spare cables. I make a uh, sign right here to lay on top of my equipment so hopefully no one gets electrocuted. This little fan just kind of blows air upward. This box right here is a huge uh, isolation transformer that I use to isolate this stuff up here. Also, it's required, the way that this, is, that this box down here has got a big holding relay in it, and it's part of this system right here. So that works. These little devices are great. These things called kill a watt. Measure your voltage, your current, your power, or your apparent power. Frequency is always 59.9 for whatever reason. I don't know. It'll also measure the power factor. They're a great little device. You cannot power them up slowly though. You can't take the Variac and bring it up slowly on the Variac because it doesn't know what to do. Uh, you got to power it up at about 100 volts or, or more uh, for it to come up properly. Keep some eye protection around. Always lots of lots and lots of cables. Of course, my oscilloscopes and what have you. Got me a nice stereo out here. A little Mac uh, 1700 receiver. I can't have it on right now, or you know, YouTube won't say I'm, you know, copyright infringement, whatever. This is another set of equipment I don't use too much. This is for my basically my RF. This goes from I think fractional hertz up to uh, one to one gigahertz. 
another uh, couple of function generators. They're kind of nice, but I hardly ever use them. I bought this function generator first before I bought the uh, HP 8903. And uh, while it does work, it does work as advertised, its, um, its distortion down at low frequencies is really quite bad. Uh, everybody's got to have a PC. Uh, different parts and pieces here. There's an old bird watt meter. Again, I'm half RF and half audio. Um, got a, a um, uh, what do you call this? TB7DU tube tester. Got to have a tube tester. When people ask me about uh, tube testers, I tell them on a scale of 1 to 10, I give them about a 3. They're nice to have, but to really know what's going on, you're going to have to use something like a bias probe, like this guy up here, that you can plug into the tube socket, and then plug the tube into it, into this device, and measure plate, current, screen card, etc. This is just my promotional material. I have my business cards. I put these on the, on my amplifiers as I repair them as a little bit of advertisement. If I do something really exceptional and I'm in love with it, I even put one of these guys on there. And uh, of course I have a little some promotional uh, uh, mouse pads. They're not much money. And here I keep my uh, BB gun in case I'm attacked. I'll have something to throw at them. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> drills and hex keys and meters and what have you. Got lots of meters. Capacitance meters, which uh, again I think are on a scale of 1 to 10. I think they're about a 3 too. A 3 also. Love my my Fluke and uh, Tektronix meters. This little ESR meter is coming really handy. I made a YouTube video on it and, and also this LC meter. Actually quite nice. Uh, the rest of it is just bazillions of parts. I won't go into all that. That's an app I fixed today. A little Marshall. Let's see, what do I have down here? Uh, more of my RF stuff. These are attenuators. Don't hardly use them. This is a digital replacement for the Bird uh, model, whatever it is, 46. I don't know, I may be calling it wrong. Um, 43. Really nice, actually a nice digital readout. This million meters come in handy many times. Uh, little RF amplifier too, and more basic RF junk and large dummy loads. Two power supplies here. This one is regulated. There it is. This one is not regulated, but it's just monstrously brute force. I just. Uh, Put these on with a little bit of Velcro on the on both sides and glue. You know they're just stuck on there, so I can have a digital readout of it. Use a couple of big variacs. I'm kind of backing up here. This big variac right here feeds uh, this power strip right here and this kill a watt thing. This one right here feeds uh, this right here. This power supply right here so that I can vary the voltage precisely. So that's what that is. Got some uh, extra stuff over here. Another scope cart. Oh yeah, speaking of scope cart, this is an old scope cart right here. Old Tektronix scope cart. And in my opinion, it's the best. These things are built like tanks. And the fact that this drawer is flat is actually much better, in my opinion, than this one right here. This cart, uh, you pull out on this, and it, whoops, see this cart tilts. But the problem is, is when you got it at an angle like this, your drawer is at an angle, and this thing's in the way. Hello! See if I can slide it off in the floor, that'll make me cry. Uh, I got another big Mac 2205 down here. Let me see, I'm just storing it right there right now. Uh, Probably a ton of variacs of transformers. All this is transformers. I didn't want to put it up in the attic. I figured that much dead weight up in the attic would not be a good idea. Lots of glue. I love adhesives. Goop. A household. Well, this is in Spanish since I live in El Paso. Most everything is. Goop. G O O P. Best stuff in the world. 
and you can I just love that stuff I use it for everything uh, this JB weld uh, quick dry JB quick I believe it's called yeah really good good epoxy um, can't get enough cleaners and chemicals and solvents and uh, one thing that I've always found that is really important to, for cleaning is uh, lighter fluid really good stuff storing more of our modules for uh, for the oscilloscope plug-in and what have you different spectrum analyzer yeah back to the oscilloscope over here the way that this oscilloscope the 7904 and I think this whole 7000 series is made is that there's two vertical channels right here and two horizontal channels right here so you can plug in like two so you could have four channels and then you could have two different um, uh, horizontal units and you select them this way now this unit right here the spectrum analyzer this is a 7L12 it goes up to 1.8 gigahertz beautiful device um, it has a vertical unit and a horizontal unit so it has to plug in the middle and, and so that it has its vertical unit in one of these two slots and its horizontal unit in one of these two slots that's the way that works I have a little meter here that I'm always watching my line voltage and you can see it varying a little bit. I have some really steady line voltage around here even though I live in a very old neighborhood. My old house was built in 1930. It was 83 years old and the power poles are in the alley but they do keep new transformers on them and everything around here works quite well. Let's see, tools down here, screwdrivers, etc. Lots of that kind of stuff. A Dremel tool drawer. Again, I'm, I can't, uh, I can't hardly live without a Dremel tool. And then, uh, of course, all of the other things that a person has to have. Lots of wire. An old Electrolux vacuum cleaner. These things run forever. I highly recommend them. You can get them at uh, garage sales and estate sales for almost nothing. And you can still buy bags for them cheap. This is something I built recently. This is a uh, pad that I put up to work on sometimes. But I have this, uh, I put a copper sheet on the back because I have a noisy workbench, electrically noisy workbench. And I have learned, I've been trying to fix things and scratching my head and go, oh yeah, I know what's wrong with it. And then I put it back in its case or or cover it up or something like that and the noise goes away so it really comes in handy for both a soft spot and a uh, and a shield well I think that's kind of it right here for the uh, for the shop a board that I can write notes on that I have lots of tools and I wish I could turn up the radio, but I can't because I listen to the radio all the time. So I would love to see other people's shops. Because I think everybody has something unique that somebody else says, hey, that's not a bad idea. And I hope I've provided some ideas for others. Oh yeah, there's my... That's a pellet gun, a 22 caliber pellet gun. Remember, I live in Texas. So whatever that's worth. Uh, that's it. Everything, uh, everything looks uh, in shape, and uh, I have a heck of a lot of fun. I hope you guys do too. I hope you enjoy uh, these crazy videos.